Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe below so we can expand our Squatch search with your help. Report number 13691, Class Alpha. This report was submitted by the witness on Sunday, January 29, 2006. This sighting took place in Jackson County near the town of Wanbley, South Dakota in November, not too far from Highway 44. The witness says, quote, I am quite surprised that there are no other reports coming from the Wanbley area. There is a creek running from a butt eight miles south of Wanbley, through Wanbley, and out to the Badlands. And there is a rich history of sightings of Bigfoots in this particular area. The witness explained in his report that this sighting took place between 4 and 4.30 in the morning. The weather was clear, but there was no moonlight and it was very dark. He describes the environment as rolling hills and there were a few trees and brush in the general area and the incident occurred as he drove into a valley. The witness described the details of what he observed that morning and he tells us this story. He says, I just started working as a police officer and I was assigned the midnight shift. I was doing my basic patrols when I was running low on gas. The officer who was working the evening had the gas card with him, and he lived approximately seven miles south of Wanbley on a gravel road. I spoke with him over the phone, and he said that he'll be waiting for me to come and get it. I drove out to his residence, and I did get the card, and I started driving back to Wanbley. I was coming over a hill in my patrol unit, which was a Chevy Tahoe, which did sit kind of high to the ground. Now the ditch area on this gravel road is approximately four to five feet deep on both sides. I was northbound when I started to descend the hill. I noticed something bobbing in the ditch on the west side of the road. It was kind of high off the ground. I thought it was a bat or a bird, so I didn't think anything of it. The next minute I saw something run across the road right in front of me. It was running towards the east. I did see what I thought was the shoulder area to the thigh area through the windshield. I had a side view of this thing. I could still remember seeing the reddish brown hair which covered the thing. The hair looked to be approximately four to five inches in length, and the overall torso and body which I could see was slim from the chest to the arms. The arms were long and slim. I do not remember seeing the hands. It only happened for a brief second or so, but whatever it was, was very fast. I did stop and turn around to try to see what it was, but it was gone. Now that morning, once the sun came up, I did find some impressions in the ground. Upon feeling the impressions with my own feet, P.S. I wear a size 13 boot, and I could make out the heel and the toes in the impression in the grass. I could not locate any foot tracks in the dirt, as the ground was very hard. Now, I was the only one that witnessed this. However, there are many other stories about sightings in this area. They're too numerous to tell here. There is a creek that runs through town, Wombly, out to the Badlands. I'm pretty sure you all are familiar with that region. If you plan any expeditions in South Dakota, you should try there. Just give me a call and I'll brief you as best as I can. That was the story that the witness reported in his own words. And after hearing it, I did a follow-up investigation. I have had the opportunity to talk with this officer many times over the phone and by email. And while meeting him and staying with him at his home, I have visited the location. And from our discussions, a few details can be added. He was driving at a moderate speed of about 35 miles per hour when, out of the corner of his eye, he noticed some movement off to his left. Almost immediately, Within two or three seconds, a large upright figure dashed across the road from his left to right. The sighting lasted just a second and crossed so suddenly that he didn't even have a chance to step on the brakes until it had already passed in front of him. The figure was brilliantly illuminated in his headlights, but it was so close, probably within five feet, that he was only able to see from its thigh to its shoulder. The lower legs were out of his view beneath the hood of the vehicle and the head was above his immediate field of view and out of the light. He described the torso and arms as skinny and mentioned the prominent swinging of the arms. Several local residents and police officers are now in contact with each other. Their investigations are continuing. 
Well, that concludes the report number 13691, investigated this by episode, David Petty. We bring together not one, but three different reports. These reports all come from the state of Wyoming, and they come together to form what we like to call a triangulation zone. From the Shoshone to Yellowstone and across at Medicine Bow, Wyoming is a beautiful and picturesque state, and Bigfoot is more active here than many realize. Our first report today, number 902, Class Alpha, was submitted by our witness Mark on Thursday, November 5th, 1998. He was in Medicine Bow National Forest when he had the sighting. Here is his report. A friend and I were gathering firewood around 5 p.m. in the evening. There was maybe an inch of new snow on the ground and a moderate fog had settled in on the mountainside. We were maybe two or three hundred yards from camp up on the mountainside. As we gathered small sticks and branches from dead trees, I noticed something out of the corner of my eye, and a huge hairy animal, maybe seven or eight feet tall, ran in front of us. The creature was maybe 10 or 15 yards ahead of us in some thicker timber. The creature ran in front of us for maybe 30 or 40 yards, but because of the fog, we lost track of him. The creature ran or moved quickly on two legs for the entire time we observed him. There is no doubt in my mind that the creature was not a bear, but something else, such as a Sasquatch. Two days later, while hunting, I heard a terrible scream like nothing I'd ever heard before. It wasn't a screech owl or coyote or elk. It was incredibly high-pitched and echoed off a canyon wall. Just the thought of it still makes my hair stand on end. There are two things noted about this report. Number one, there was another witness with Mark that not only observed the sighting, but also heard the screams two days later. The second note concerns the environment. The creature was sighted on a mountainside in a dense patch of the Medicine Bow National Forest, which was about 10 or 15 miles from the Colorado border. The elevation there is about 8,000 to 9,000 feet. The sighting was observed about five or 600 yards from the Roaring Fork branch of the Little Snake River. The screams or wailing was heard about three or four miles from where this visual sighting took place. The screams came from somewhere in some very dark timber off the side of a canyon or a gorge. That wraps up our first report. Our second report today comes to us from Teton County, Wyoming, and that is at the eastern edge of our Wyoming Squatch Triangulation Zone. Report number 6441, Class Alpha, was submitted by the witness on Tuesday, June 3, 2003. The witness reported that this sighting was very frightening. It occurred at night near the entrance to Teton Park by the town of Jackson Hole, Wyoming. It was a rainy night, and there was a slight drizzle. It was dark, except there was a little bit of moonlight when the clouds would let it shine. Even though it's very rural in the area of this sighting, the witness said there was one part of the road that was occupied by many people. The other part was endless wildlife. So this sighting occurred in a rural, urban margin area. The witness continues their report and says, my family and I, which totaled five witnesses, including myself, were staying in beautiful Grand Teton National Park for a few nights, and on one of those nights, a mysterious yet real thing happened. That night, when we were all asleep, the family dog started violently barking. Everyone sprang to their feet to discover a large, hairy creature standing about 10 feet from our RV. There was a very strong stench that we could smell through the RV. It turned around, it looked at the RV, and started jogging off in a humanly way. We were all so amazed that nobody in the camper said a word until the next morning. We went outside, and there were huge footprints since it was damp and rainy. We didn't get a good look at the animal. It was dark and rainy. We couldn't even tell what color it was, but we can tell you we saw something hairy and very large. A follow-up investigation report was done by BFRO investigator, Dr. Stephen Coy. Dr. Stephen Coy is a former wildlife biologist for the U.S. Department of Interior. Dr. Coy says, quote, I interviewed the witness on September 7, 2003. He has become very interested in the Sasquatch mystery since he experienced this incident in Wyoming. After speaking to him, the following reported facts can be added to the report. 
The witness was on vacation with his grandmother, grandfather, aunt, and uncle. They were planning to drive into Yellowstone Park, but because of the inclement weather, camped in a campground in Teton National Park. There were only perhaps two or three RVs in the campground on this particular night in early June. The campers had gotten snowed off of Jackson Lake that day, so there was snow on the ground, making it easy to observe the large, dark figure from the windows of their RV. He estimated the creature to be about seven foot tall with four foot wide shoulders and a conical, hairy head. It was reaching up into a tree as they could see the bow moving. They could hear it grunting before it turned toward the RV and then ran off in long strides. Huge tracks were seen in the snow the following morning. That's the end of our second report. Our third report today has a lot of detail and comes from the northern end of our Wyoming Squatch Triangulation Zone. This sighting took place in Sheridan County near the town of Shell at the end of a logging road off of US Highway 14. The three witnesses were squirrel hunting. It was about 5 p.m. There was good light and good visibility. It was a clear fall day. The temperature was in the upper 40s. The incident took place about a mile northwest from their camp. The altitude there is nearly 9,000 feet. It's all confer trees and very dense. The witness told us there's a lot of windfall in that area. So when you're walking, you're on the ground as much as you are off of it because of the fallen trees. The camp and where the sighting took place are in a basin about two to three miles wide. The tops of the surrounding mountains are rocky and for the most part bare above the tree line. And there is a creek running through the center of this basin called Owen Creek. This witness gives us a very detailed report. He told us, Myself and two friends went into the forest with our slingshots to find some squirrels. We had been coming to this place for years every September for our church retreat. The elk were just starting to come out into rut and we could hear them buggling up on the higher plateaus as we were hiking in. We were about a mile or so northwest of the lodge. There was a barbed wire fence cutting through the woods here, and on either side of it for about 10 to 15 yards, the trees were younger, ranging from 4 to 8 feet tall. It was apparently cleared for the making of the fence. We decided it would be easier to walk alongside the fence for a while. We went another few hundred yards, and as we rounded a bend, my friends suddenly stopped. I was following, and so I stopped as well. I thought maybe we had walked up on something. My friend turned and looked at me and whispered, Do you see that? I couldn't see as there was a small pine in my way. I started to ease forward, and as the tree moved out of my view, I just froze at what I saw. At first, I thought it was a large bear, but discounted that idea immediately. It was like a massive human-like animal covered in a dark, coarse-looking hair like a black bear, but not as thick in all areas. The face, chest, inside elbow area, and hands were nearly bare. It was around 8 feet tall, and I would say it weighed between 450 to 550 pounds. It had shoulders that were extremely wide, and they sort of slumped forward. Its arms were phenomenally long and thick. They hung far below the thigh area, and the hands were not as large, but still very big. They were more thick than long. The buttocks were unproportionately large. They didn't seem to fit the animal. They too were very muscular looking. The head of the animal seemed to be plopped right onto the shoulders. If the thing had a neck, it wasn't any more than three to four inches long. The face was somewhat like a man's and somewhat like a gorilla. We were about 15 to 20 yards from it. It stood there seemingly observing us and we crouched there observing it. This went on for at least two minutes. Then it took a small step to the left and forward, partially blocking our view of it from the crouch down. You could hear it breathing, like it had been running to get where it was. Then, my friend yelled at it, saying, Very funny, who's in the ape suit? We told him to shut up. I could tell it wasn't a joke. This, whatever it was, was a real animal. Then it made a noise, not really a growl, but more like a deep cough like it was clearing its throat, but quite louder, like a coughing bark. It's really hard to describe a noise you have never heard before with words. That did it for us, so we turned and sprinted down the fence line, took a cut through the woods, and went straight to my parents' camper trailer. We told him what we saw, then my friends left to go tell their parents. My father knew I wasn't fibbing. I was 12 then, and I'm 28 now. 
He had been outfitting for nearly 20 years all over Wyoming, and since I was six, I got to go along on a lot of hunts. He knew I knew the difference between one game animal and another. We waited till morning and headed back into the place where we had seen the animal the day before. We searched for two to three hours, and other than smash grass and currant brushes, we found nothing. You could see where something heavy had stood and then proceeded to the opposite direction that we had fled. My father didn't know what to think of it, but he did believe me and my friends. He said he had heard here and there about the animal that they called Bigfoot, but not in these parks, and he wasn't so sure that such an animal even existed. Even to this day, if it's brought up, he still says, You saw what you saw. The witness's report ends here. Following up, the investigator reports the witness called me at his expense, and we were on the phone for well over an hour. The one phrase he kept repeating is that he has no idea what it is he saw, but that it appeared to be identical to what people describe as being a Sasquatch, and that it was definitely an animal of some kind. The witness claims that he did not have any preconception of what Sasquatch should look like, as he had never heard any mention of them up until his encounter. As I questioned him further, he did reveal some very interesting details about the sighting. The incident took place between 15 and 20 yards distance and lasted two minutes or so. He noticed that the arms were exceptionally long, though they did not quite reach the knees. He also noted that the upper body seemed very disproportionate to the lower body, and that the upper body was very long while the legs were rather short in comparison. The legs were very thick and muscular, though. He also mentioned the rump of the animal as being very large, not protruding, but very pronounced and muscular. He went on to mention that the animal was very broad across the shoulders and that it was slouched forward slightly. He described it as it being like a man that was starting to slouch forward as if to place his hands on his knees. The shoulders appeared to be more forward on the torso than they would on a person as it stood there. He said that the face appeared negroid, except that it was wider through the jowls. He also noted that the animal had an extremely pronounced sagittal crest, so much so that he was unable to make out the eyes of the animal. The nose was pushed up, wide, and flat. During the entire duration of their standoff, the animal did not move. During this time, he said that his friend shouted at the animal a couple of times, but without effect. While they were standing there, he said he could hear the animal breathing from time to time, as if it were taking an occasional deep breath. After the last time his friend yelled at the animal, it let out a sort of a soft cough grunt and moved slightly to the left and forward towards them. He describes the sound as being kind of like a bear cough, but not quite. His attempts to mimic it over the phone fell short. Upon witnessing this grunt and movement by the creature, the boys immediately turned around and fled the area. As he said in his report, they returned the next day with his father, an experienced outdoorsman, but found nothing other than disturbances where the animal had been standing. In closing, he says that at no time during the encounter did he feel threatened by the animal, although he was in awe of the sheer size and perceived strength of it. It seemed equally as curious in them as they were in it. He went on to mention that he did not notice any foul odors associated with the animal and he did not see any features to denote which sex the animal was. Well, we've reached the end of our third report. And this concludes our Wyoming Squatch Triangulation Zone report covering the northern, southern, and eastern parts of the beautiful and picturesque state this episode, of Wyoming. We bring you two different sightings from the same witness. Our reports today come to us from Shoshone County, Idaho, close to Prospector Creek. Report number 65924, Class Bravo, was submitted by the witness Bruce on Wednesday, August 12, 2020 just four days after his second sighting. Our witness tells us that on August 8, 2020, around 9.30 p.m., he had a strange occurrence while he was camping on the St. Joe River in Idaho. He said, It is the second time I've had an experience by the St. Joe River. The first one was about eight years ago. A neighboring camper was chopping wood for about 10 to 15 minutes, and after he quit, I heard two wood knocks above the road and above the campground. That kind of freaked me out. I got up and went and looked and there was something on the road above us that was staring down at me. 
I don't know what it was, but it was there. My second experience happened last weekend on August 8, 2020. It was a clear night, and I was at a gravel pit logging landing. I'm not really sure what the area was used for. I heard three whoops or long group calls over the sound of my music. When I turned my music off, I heard nothing. It became very quiet. No one was camping within one half mile of me, and that's what made me wonder what was going on. I would like to give a verbal description of what I encountered, so if you're interested, call me. So BFRO investigator Daryl Euler did just that. His follow-up investigation report adds the following details. I spoke with this witness over the phone for approximately 45 minutes. I found him to be very sincere about his experiences. He said after the latest incident, he felt compelled to submit a report. The witness relayed the following to me. Incident number one. On Labor Day weekend in 2012, he was camping at Turner Flat Campground right along the St. Joe River. He was camped in spot number one, which is closest to the St. Joe River Road. It was around 7 to 7.30 in the evening, and a fellow camper had been chopping wood for his campfire. About 10 minutes after the chopping had stopped, this witness heard two loud and distinct wood knock sounds coming from across the road and up the hill, which is away from the other campers. He described the knocks as having more resonance than the sound of chopping wood. He walked up and down the road while scanning the hillside. The witness then described seeing a large, dark face looking at him from a gap in the brush on the hillside. He said they had eye contact for approximately a minute before he retreated back to his campsite to retrieve a firearm. He went back to the location where he saw the face and it was gone. When I asked the witness to describe what he saw, his first words were big eyes, big face. Upon further questioning, he advised he was not close enough to see details, but the head was big, dark-colored, oval-shaped, and had dark eyes. He went up to the location the next morning to check for footprints. He didn't find any prints, but standing on his tiptoes, he could look through the gap in the brush where he saw the face. From this vantage point, he could see down into the campground. Incident number two. This is the latest incident which prompted this report. On August 8, 2020, the witness was camping in an undeveloped campsite approximately 2.6 miles east of the first incident as the crow flies. This site was across the road from the river on the hillside. It was approximately 9.30 p.m. and he was listening to some classic rock over a small Bluetooth speaker. The witness heard three loud whoops from the hillside above and to the east of him. He described the whoops as being drawn out sounding. He said he immediately knew a human didn't make that sound and that there was no one camped near him. He said he turned off his speaker and listened, but there were no more vocalizations. He told me he decided to make whooping sounds back, but there was no answer and it was quiet the rest of the night. This witness seemed genuinely unnerved by the latest incident. I am familiar with this area, and it's a rugged country. Any sounds coming from the north of the campsite is extremely unlikely to come from a human source since it's nothing but steep, forested terrain. The witness told me he had been camping in the St. Joe National Forest for the last 20 years, and these are the only two encounters that he could not contribute to any of the local known wildlife. Searching for Sasquatch is where a witness can tell their story, unload those feelings, and get it off their shoulders. If you would like to report a sighting, email us at sfsasquatch at gmail.com or see the link in the description below. Just copy and paste the link in your email. In this report, we bring you two recent sightings. Both of them happened in the beautiful state of North Carolina. Our first report, number 65677, Class Alpha, comes to us from Montgomery County and was submitted by the witness on Thursday, July 2nd, 2020. This husband and wife were driving about 12 noon on a beautiful July day approximately one to one and a half miles north of Mount Gilead, North Carolina, 
heading towards the Uari National Forest. The area where the sighting took place was on a stretch of road with railroad tracks on the right and a forested area on the left, with no homes in the immediate area. The wife provided us with the following report. She said, We were headed up to the Uari National Forest in North Carolina for a day trip on 6 18 20 and was on Highway 109 North, approximately one to one and a half miles north of Mount Gilead. We were parallel to railroad tracks on the right and woods on the left. I was focused on the road. It appeared approximately 200 feet in front of the car. I didn't see it come out of the woods, but I saw it right before it crossed the road in two bounds. It was large, maybe eight foot, covered in black hair or fur. There was a difference in color in the face and hands. They were lighter in color. Once it crossed the road, it headed toward the railroad tracks and was gone by the time I got there. This all happened within a span of five to six seconds. My husband was driving, but was looking in his left side mirror at a car behind us. So let's move on to our second report today, number 64024, Class Alpha. This report comes from Swain County, North Carolina, and was submitted by the witness on Friday, January 31st, 2020. This married couple was also driving. It was early dusk with good lighting around 5.30 p.m. They were driving northeast on Needmore Road headed towards Bryson City. The area where this sighting took place was forested at a river's edge near a mountain road. The wife submitted the following report. She said, I want to report a sighting of a huge Bigfoot. As my husband and I often do, we were taking a shortcut across the mountain here in Western North Carolina, heading home. As I was driving along the river, there was what I thought a very strange and odd looking man. And as we passed it, I said to my husband, that is a strange looking person. And as I looked into the rear view mirror, it stood up on the road and was watching us driving away. And that is when I realized what it really was. I told my husband, that is a Bigfoot. In a panic, I drove away, but my husband insisted that we turn around and go back. I was in tears from the fear, but we found an area to turn around and I did so. As we approached that area, we saw it on the side of the road watching us. He was huge. My husband got out of the car to get a better look, and he couldn't believe what we were looking at. It had to be at least eight to nine feet tall, covered in long black hair all over its body. It was massive. We were about 100 yards away and nothing was obstructing our view. I yelled at my husband to get back into the car and I managed to turn my Jeep around and I got the heck out of there. After hearing this report, a follow-up investigation was done by BFRO investigator Matthew Moneymaker. His report is as follows. I spoke with both witnesses today by phone, Denise and Tony. In summation, it's a credible report. Two credible witnesses. The observation happened yesterday, February 1st, 2020, in North Carolina, along the Little Tennessee River, southwest of Bryson City. This is a remote, mountainous terrain. Needmore Road hugs the river for several lonely miles. There was no other traffic on Needmore. The Sasquatch was on the bank of the river at dusk. The sky was getting dark, but still light enough to see the figure off the short embankment next to the river. The vehicle passed the figure. Denise and Tony both saw it pass behind the vehicle in their mirrors and realized how large it was. They continued driving, but Tony urged Denise to stop and drive back so they could get another look. They drove back. When they rounded the bend and saw the section of road where the Sasquatch had been standing, it was still there on the edge of the road looking in their direction, as if it heard the vehicle coming back. They stopped as soon as the Sasquatch came into view, roughly 100 yards away. The Sasquatch could have taken a single step to get out of view, but it stood there and looked toward the vehicle. Tony got out of the vehicle to get a better view. They observed it for roughly three minutes before Denise finally started yelling for her husband to get into the car so they could leave. The Sasquatch 
was still standing there when Denise and Tony drove away. So that concludes our reports today on some recent sightings from the beautiful state of North Carolina. Stay tuned for more episodes. Thanks for watching and please like and subscribe below so we can expand our Squatch search with your help.